One question that can cause an instant divide within a room is the simple, do you believe in ghosts? You'll most likely be met with a chorus of devoted believers, avid deniers, and the people caught somewhere in between. Well, any skeptics amongst us, prepare to be convinced of the supernatural and to those of us who already believe, sit back and enjoy. Today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three mysterious buildings and the tragedies behind them. The Winchester House Secret Room Winchester House has been a mystery in the making for over a century, built over the course of 38 years with construction beginning in 1884, though the tales and eeriness linger even today. It took nearly four decades to create this masterpiece of a historical building, which is known today for its labyrinth of corridors and rooms. It's no wonder some of them hold rather dark stories. You might think our story begins in 1906, with the tale of an earthquake, an attic, and an heiress. And whilst this is the most famous story behind the ongoings at Winchester, the history has a sad and deep truth leading up to this. Sarah Winchester, who commissioned the house, lost her daughter in 1866, just four years into her marriage. This loss was shortly followed by the death of her father-in-law in 1880, and then her husband in 1881 just one year after. With so many consecutive tragedies, Sarah became convinced she was cursed. She had a life riddled with paranoia and turned to a medium to help find answers, solutions, and explanations. Perhaps not the one she had hoped to hear, Sarah was told that for each life that had been taken by a Winchester rifle, their spirit would return as a ghost to haunt not only the house, but also Sarah and her family. According to some, such as the Smithsonian Magazine, the medium advised that Sarah should move out to California where the Winchester House now stands. The medium allegedly also told Sarah to begin to build a home that would satisfy these spirits, ghosts and ghouls, and alleviate the family curse. Heeding this warning, Sarah left Connecticut behind and began building in 1884 in California. Some speculate that the construction crews worked for 24 hours a day, every day of the week until Sarah's death in 1922. This supposed fact has since been debunked by historian Mary Jo Ignoffo, who stated to California Home Design that Winchester's own letters explain that she sent workers away for months at a time. This staggered and strange design process, whether that is continuous labor or months of inactivity, has certainly led to a bizarre set of architectural features within this house, with staircases that lead to nowhere, doors with nothing behind, windows that overlook rooms, and the seemingly endless maze design. The house reached a staggering seven stories before an earthquake in 1906 knocked the highest three down. Many modern-day visitors have guessed that the confusing, maze-like design was intentional, a way to mislead the ghosts and deter them. Perhaps Sarah hadn't heard they could walk through walls. Then again, our more level-headed historian, Ignofo, concluded that the random doors and staircases that we can see today were simply quick fixes to seal off the damage this landmark had seen as a result of the earthquake. During the 1906 earthquake, Sarah became trapped inside the attic room, stuck listening to the winds raging outside. Sarah concluded that the spirits were angry, prompting the earthquake as a symbol of their discontent, and her short time in captivity was a form of punishment. She boarded up the attic she had become trapped in and never entered it again. This room remained hidden away for over a century. Before 2016, descriptions of the house detailed 40 staircases, 2,000 doors, 47 fireplaces, and upwards of 10,000 windows. It wasn't until 2016, however, that the attic room was stumbled across, despite the lengths of this house being stumbled through countless times. This brought the room count up to a staggering 161. Monte Cristo Historic Homestead Another haunted home based upon a tragedy is the Monte Cristo, built in Australia. The original homeowner and builder of this home was one Christopher Crawley. Though the tragic tale really commences when his wife, Elizabeth, took over the home in 1910 upon her husband's death. 
Grief-stricken at the loss of her husband, Elizabeth spent the remainder of her life within the walls of the house, leaving only twice before her death. She converted the box room into a chapel and became highly religious, turning to the Bible for comfort and support. Elizabeth was tied so closely to her home, believed to have just left twice before her death due to a burst appendix, that many think she stays there still today, as her ghost is now said to haunt the building. The death and haunting of Elizabeth Crawley appears to have been a catalyst to supernatural activity, prompting apparitions, poltergeists, unexplained noises and orbs as well as phantom-like sounds. The events that have followed the initial death include the violent death of a maid who fell from a second-floor balcony, a woman walking in a period dress seen as either a figure or silhouette, leaving blood-stained footsteps behind as she walks along the veranda, the ghost of Harold and a stable boy who lost his life due to a fire. Paranormal researchers have said that he is now thought to linger by the coach house. For 40 years, Harold had been chained up within the caretaker's cottage, he had been found lying by his mother's deceased body and was promptly sent to a home for the insane, as indelicately described at the time. Today, you will know if Harold is drawing near by the sound of chains clanking together. Marketed as the most haunted house in Australia, Monte Cristo lives on as a popular spot for thrill-seekers and believers of the supernatural to visit when in Australia, with tours of the house offered each Saturday at 6pm for over 15-year-olds. This isn't a tour for the faint of heart. A tour around Monte Cristo could certainly cement your belief in the supernatural or convert you to an avid believer if you aren't already. Virginia Beach Ferry Plantation House The hauntings at Ferry Plantation House have been difficult to trace to a start date, though records of supernatural activity have been documented in the 20th and 21st century we can't assess just how far the history of this particular house goes. Whilst the building is tricky to assess, the land is less difficult to navigate. Once belonging to the indigenous Chesapean tribe, this land was taken over during colonization within the 17th century. This has been assessed as an accurate placement of both these groups upon a historical timeline, supported by the archaeological discovery of pottery, jewelry and the heads of arrows. The name Ferry Plantation House is derived from the ferry services established in 1636 and 1642. The second ferry service, created by Savile Gaskin in 1642, brought a new demographic to Virginia, largely made up of the wealthy and slaves. The neighborhood was held in high esteem, one of wealth and significance, at least until the burning of the Walk family mansion, the family who owned and ran the local tavern in 1828. The Ferry Plantation House attracts many guests throughout the year, and whilst some visit for the federal architecture and insights into colonial life, many seek out the rumoured eleven ghosts that lurk here. The most commonly reported sightings are said to come from the mysterious southeast wing of the house. In its prime, the house seemed to have strange behaviour tied to it. Even when the house had no residence, lights would mysteriously be on, an occurrence that still happens today according to volunteers. This has been particularly common on the third floor. Some of the well-known ghosts residing at the Ferry Plantation House include Henry, a slave seeking revenge, Sally Rebecca Walk, who cries and grieves for her partner, and the Lady in White, whose ghost has been seen falling down the stairs. Many guests also have experienced the cries of those who fell victim to a shipwreck in 1810. Perhaps the most famous spirit to encounter, however, is the Witch of Pungo. Grace White Sherwood was a farmer and midwife within the 1700s. Described as being both beautiful and medically skilled, it was not long before she was deemed a witch by much of society. Whilst herbal remedies, which Grace was highly skilled in, were once viewed as everyday things, times had changed and women using medicinal herbs were thought to be interacting with the devil, and many midwives were accused with plenty thinking it was the perfect profession to sacrifice people to the devil. Grace was put on trial and taken to court multiple times throughout her lifetime, taking the blame for poor harvests, for livestock that continued to pass away, and even the bad weather. Despite these numerous accusations, it wasn't until 1706 that Grace was deemed guilty, when she was blamed for the miscarriage of Elizabeth 
the woman accusing her. Grace did not pass the trial by water test she had been placed on, floating to the surface of the water, or according to those in charge, being rejected by the holy water. She was imprisoned, eventually dying, locked up before her name had been cleared. Grace lies beneath the grounds of Ferry Plantation House, and many guests report seeing her presence alongside the other ten spirits whilst visiting. Have these ghost stories convinced you of the supernatural, or will you have to book a tour to see if you believe the full story? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.